Good evening, YouTube. This is called a ghost cube, and it's basically the same thing as a Rubik's cube, but it's been sliced so that the, instead of making a cube, it, when it's not solved, it becomes kind of a random jumble of shapes. And now uh, this is, of course, in the solved state, uh, so it does look like a cube. But as you can see, as you turn it, uh, it doesn't it immediately becomes not a cube anymore. But uh, there's several states that are very close to being solved. Um, that are actually not if you get some very similar uh, shapes in the wrong place, and this triangle is one of them. Um, if you do any research on ghost cubes, you'll see that um, there's actually three pieces that look almost identical to this triangle. And as you're trying to solve them, you can get them in any one of the wrong spots. And you might call it cheating, but um, we're going to solve that problem so that it's never difficult to know if you have that, that triangle in the right place. And I think we're going to use a very similar solution to how we did uh, the glossy, non-glossy paint, just to give that a, a second try, because I like that effect so much, and I think this would be a nice way to make that work out. Alright, so our first step is to simply place this uh, ghost cube in a cardboard box and give the first three sides a nice coat of silver, and then, uh, actually gives it, gives it three coats, we're going to fast forward through that, and then we're going to flip it over and give the other three sides a nice a solid couple coats of gold. And then uh, once we get the two of those on there, uh, one side gold, one side silver, we're then gonna uh, mask it off with a piece of lace, actually the same lace that we used from the glossy non-glossy video. Uh, here you can see it's just kind of a simple rose pattern, um, just real simple that I picked up at Walmart. I got a whole bunch of it at one time. So I have quite a bit left over, and I figured it worked out well for that, so it'll probably work just as well for this. You can get kind of a better picture of it here. This is actually already a used piece, but I think it'll still work just fine. And so we wrap it around the cube, uh, making sure to get uh, one pyramid side, uh, and then uh, just the trick is to kind of pull it super tight, trying to get all the wrinkles out here. We kind of just pull them out with my fingers and uh, get it where it needs to be. and. Uh, if I'm lucky, it'll kind of transfer a nice part of this pattern onto the cube and uh, come across pretty cleanly. I think that shouldn't be too hard. Uh, and I just stuff the excess down in this little hole here and pop the cube back in its original position, making sure I have the one of the, the rotating pyramids on the outside. And we just come back, give it the gold on the silver side, and we'll pull it out, unwrap it. As you can see it here a little bit, you can see how the pattern comes out. And then what we're gonna do is just wrap it right back up again, just like we did, and do the other side, uh, silver on the gold side now. So that's really pretty much all there is to it, and we're gonna, again, give it three coats on either side. So we got a total of six coats of paint on both sides of this, uh, except for the mask was. And then we're gonna let it sit and dry for about 20 minutes, and then we'll see how this turns out. And again, you can see here what I'm referring to uh, on the pyramid sides, I mean, um, two of the corners rotate all the way around. Um, if you have any idea what a Rubik's Cube is, you have three different layers, and you can see a pretty good idea of how those equate and work inside the, the Ghost Cube here. Thanks for watching.